Good morning, Miss Barbara. Hi, glad to see you. I just sent everybody an announcement. I made a special video to help with um, something you're about to cover. Uh, if not this week, then next week. So uh, it's called Extra Help with uh, Analyzing Quadratic Functions. I think it's going to be this week you cover it, but I'm not sure. Meanwhile, we didn't get to something we needed to get to last week. And that is the inverse functions of radical functions. Remember, we've done inverse functions, how you go about finding the inverse of a function, but this will be a good review of the steps as we apply them to uh, radical functions. Okay, so here's number one in your homework. Here we've got a radical function, f of x equals the cube root of 3x. Okay, now what we need to do is find the inverse function. Remember, there's there are steps you follow to find an inverse of a function, and here it is. First, you change the f of x to y. Then you switch the letters. OK, now let me make sure I am indeed recording and I am, okay. Just always have to make sure. Now I need to solve for Y, but Y is locked up underneath a cube radical. So I am going to have to do the opposite, the inverse operation of cubing, of taking a cube root, which is cubing. That is, I'm going to cube both sides of the equation. So we'll have x to the third equals, now how this works, remember this, the cube root of something can also be written as the one third root and remember I'm cubing that. So when you have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. One third times three, if you put that in your calculator, is one. How handy can we get Well, 3y to the one power is just 3y. So to solve for y, I divide by 3 and I divide by 3. So y equals x to the third power over three. But what y is now is it's the inverse of that original function f of x. And the way that you write inverse is this way. f inverse of x is what you say, and f inverse of x equals x to the third over Three. So the original function f of x is the cube root of 3x 
and its inverse, F inverse of X, is X to the third power over three. Okay, now going through these steps. One, you change the F of X to Y. Two, you switch the X and the Y. And three, you solve for Y, and that's the longest part. And then four, you write what Y equals as this. We've done these before with linear functions. Now we're doing them with radical functions. Um, yeah. Let's do another one. They're not more difficult than this. Thank goodness. All right, find the inverse function of. Notice these all have odd indexes. That's because those are the most likely to be one-to-one -one functions. Remember that a quadratic function is not one-to-one, -one, so you can't just flat out find the inverse, because if you did, the answer would be wrong because this is not a one-to-one -one function, because it fails the horizontal line test. The horizontal line has to touch only, only one, needs to touch only one part of the graph, not two. Here it touches two, so this is not one-to-one. -one. If this is the graph of y equals x squared, x squared, is not one-to-one. -one. And the reason it's important that the function be one-to-one -one is that is the only way you can find an inverse. Here's our next one. We are going to find the inverse function of the fifth root of X minus five. So step one, I change F of X to Y because that's what it is anyway. Okay, now step two. I switch the letters. Okay, now step three. I have to solve for Y, which is stuck under there. So what I'm going to have to do is use the inverse operation of taking a fifth root, and that's to raise to a fifth power. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we now will proceed to do this a shortcut is to say, well, if I raise to the fifth power a fifth root, they're going to cancel each other out because up here that's precisely what happened. Three times one third is one. They cancel each other out. You can think of it that way. So when I take a fifth root, and raise it to the fifth power, what I get is what's underneath. Like that. Then all I have to do is solve for Y because Y isn't stuck under a radical anymore. So I'm going to add five to both sides. 
of the equation. So I find that x to the fifth power plus five equals y minus five. Uh, uh, y plus five minus five, which is zero. Which is zero, yeah. Which is y, I'm sorry. I'll get it eventually, y. So let's make this neater, y equals x to the fifth power plus five. Now, the last step, step four. What y is now is it's the inverse of that function. The symbol for inverse function is f inverse of x. And there it is right there. So you would click on B. You don't even have to write it out. Okay, let's do one more. Let's see if there's a super hard one in here. Let's do this one. Actually though, I'm going to do this one, then I'm going to go back. And I hear my dog waking up. Number five. F of X. Equals one third. X to the third power minus five. That looks kind of bad, doesn't it? Well, let's see. Y equals one third X to the third power. They're multiplied. Minus five. Now I'm going to switch the X and the Y. X equals one third Y minus five. Oh, it's not that hard at all, except I left the three out. That would make it a little more difficult. Yes, it would. Okay, I'm going to add five to both sides, plus five, plus five, and I will get X plus five equals one third times Y to the third. Okay, now I want to, let's see what they're doing. Okay, okay. I have to get rid of the one third. I know how to get rid of fractions. If I multiply one third by three, in the form of a fraction, then the threes will cancel. But I have to do the same thing over there. I have to multiply the other side of the equation by three. So, I will take the three and multiply it by X and multiply it by five. So I have three X plus 15 equals Y to the third. Well, that's almost Y, but it's not quite Y, it's Y to the third. I need to undo the cube power. So how do I do that? I take a cube root. of both sides. The, 
um, this is the same thing as this. You can keep the three inside or outside. But when you raise a cube root to a cube power, you just get to undo the radical. So now we have, let, let's go with this first because I'm thinking that might not have been clear to you. Let's go this way. Let's say I did not move my cube outside. Let's just say I kept it inside. Then I would have y to the third to the one third power. And when a base is raised to a power and raised to a power again, you multiply them. Three times one third is one. So that's why. So you're gonna have y equals the cube root of three x plus 15, and as you can see, the answer is C. But let's do it the grown up math student way and write it the right way. We've got F inverse of X equals the cube root of three X plus 15. Same four steps. Here was step one. Here was step two, where you switch the letters, switch variables. Here's step three, and three is where you go through however many steps you have to go to to solve for y. And then this is step four. Same steps all the time. Now, something I thought was a form of cheating when I was a student, you're going to encounter it, this one, f of x equals the square root of x minus 2. 4x being greater than or equal to 2. Um, if this were just this, so let's ignore that for a minute, and let's just say, okay, I'm going to find the inverse of the square root of x minus 2. So I'm going to go through the steps. There's a minor, well, it's a pretty major problem actually with this. And then two, I'm going to square up. Uh, am I going to square both sides? No, I'm going to switch letters. Now I'm going to solve for y. which means I have to do the opposite of taking a square root, which we already know is squaring. And when you square square root, boom, the radical's gone. I should do that without cheating though. Here's what's really happening. There's an invisible two here. 
the square root of, is it y minus two? Yeah, y minus two squared is going to be y minus two to the one half squared, which is going to be y minus two to the one half times two. Put that in your calculator, it's one. That's y minus two to the one, which is just y minus two. And I don't need the parentheses. So, going back here, that's not four. That's just line four. Where this is still all part of three, I need to solve for y. So I'll add two to both sides. Now step four, right? We're gonna keep our mouth shut for a minute. All by itself, This cannot be an inverse function because it's not one to one. However, if we specify that, then what we're going to get is so let's talk a little bit about something we haven't talked about at all since you first uh, uh, learned about inverse functions, which you may not even remember because it was pretty near the very first, the second week of school. And now here it is the eighth week, happy midterm. Hard to believe. Okay. So we have f of x equals the square root of x minus two, but we're, we're saying x has got to be um, equal to or greater than two. And then f inverse of x is x squared plus two. Something we talked about but not that much is that the domain of the original funct function and the range of, of, of the original function Switch. That's why you switch your X and Y. I'll show you. Here they're specifying the domain. That X is going to be greater than or equal to 2. And the range is going to be Y equal to or greater than zero. I'll show it to you. Um, we're taking the square root of X minus two.
OK, if if you're using the older calculator, be sure you close your parentheses. Make sure that that there are parentheses around the X minus two. And they're closed. OK, otherwise it will misunderstand what you're saying. So let's graph it. Here's the part. X equals two or greater than to the right of two. Okay, now. Oh, and, and the range goes from zero, y equals zero, up slowly to y equals positive infinity. Um, now, let us uh, graph in red. Hi, Ayla. Have to tell my dog hello. Excuse me. Come on, Ayla. Yeah, here she comes. Here she comes. She needs her attention, you know, you know. Now, back to work. We're going to graph the uh, inverse function in red. X squared plus two. Okay, now, wait a second here. Here's the domain and here's the range of the original function. Here's the domain and here's the range of the inverse function. The only part of this function we're going to take is, all right, the range of the original function is y is greater than or equal to zero. So we're only going to take the part of the domain that is x greater than or equal to zero. And the only part of the range we're going to take of this is y greater than or equal to two. Now what that means for us is this. Where's my graph? There it is. OK, if the range is y is greater than or equal to 2, there's nothing exciting about that. But if the domain now has to be 0, x greater than or equal to 0, we're talking about just the right side of this graph, not the left side. Now, I wish I could cover that up, so let me do this. This is going to look like this. This is going to look like this. Both of these pass the vertical, the, the horizontal line test, the HLT. H L T. The horizontal line goes through the graph only once and over here, as long as I'm taking half of the graph of H squared plus two, it passes the horizontal line test. So this is the sneaky way mathematicians get around the rules. This is your answer right here. Domain X greater than or equal to zero, range Y is greater than or equal to two, which is switched from what they were over here. And inverse functions will always be that way. This is the real number system right here. We live in the real number system. It's got fractions and negative fractions. It's got integers. Well, it's got whole numbers. And negative whole numbers. 
those that makes up the integers. Of course, it's got zero. Um, it's got square roots. It's got negative square roots. It's got cube roots like we were dealing with. We were just dealing with that and the negative version of that. Um, it's got a whole bunch of numbers. In fact, there are an infinite number of numbers in our real number system, which makes it really, really big. For the longest time, people thought that was all there was. And then along came the Italian mathematicians who said, not so fast, buddy. What happens to all those problems where you end up with a negative number under a square root? What are you going to do with that? Where does that go? And so what they decided was, we'll just say that it's uh, extraneous. OK, um, uh, we can't use it because it's not in the real number system. It's not a real number. It's just imaginary. Which was the original name of the complex number system? The imaginary number system. That was the symbol for it. And so numbers like this, numbers like this, were relegated to non-existence. But they did exist, and it took Gauss to prove that they existed. And so, just to show he had a good sense of humor, he named I as the basic component of the complex number system, which he still called imaginary. The square roots of negative numbers do exist in a much larger system of numbers that includes the real number system, but it's called now the complex number system. Okay, the symbol for the complex number system They were still calling it the imaginary number system when I was a kid. OK, somewhere along the line, somebody said it wasn't respectable enough. We need to switch to complex number system. OK, but that's just trying to be respectable. So a typical complex number looks like this. It's got two parts. This is called the real part. And it comes from the real number system, whereas this part is called the imaginary part. Okay, so it's like moving to Mars and finding out that one Martian person has two heads. You just have to accept it if that's the way they are. They'll accept, maybe they'll accept the fact that you have one head. They probably will consider you a little bit inferior because they got two. <laughs> and thank you. And we are going to be working with complex numbers today and introducing you 
to complex numbers. For instance, even though I is really the square root of negative one, you never actually write out the square root of negative one. Okay, let's look at the square root of negative 16. We're not gonna leave the number in that condition. Instead, we're gonna say, well, the square root of negative 16 is the square root of negative one times positive 16, which is the square root of negative one times the square root of 16. Well, the square root of negative one is called I, and the square root of 16 is four. So we call this number four I. The square root of negative 16 is four I. Just like the square root of positive 16 in the real number system is just four. So when your calculator gives you an error saying not in the real number system, a non-real number, it means it lives out here where the non-real numbers live in the complex number system. Okay, so incidentally, the square root of negative seven, let's work on that. The square root of seven won't break down. So what we're going to have is I times the square root of seven. Or if the instructions say put in complex form or state the answer in complex form. Then you would write I times the square root of seven as zero plus the square root of seven i. i is not under the radical. i is outside. So you have to be very, very careful. Now, there are some things that you have to memorize. Actually, you could prove it to yourself every time, but it would take a lot of, let me save this. It would take a lot of, well, it's not. It would take a lot of time if you had to prove it all to yourself, all at once, you know? It's better to memorize it. So, I is, sounds strange, doesn't it? I is, but I is the square root of negative one. On the other hand, I squared is the square root of negative one squared. Now you know what happens when you square a square root. I squared equals negative one. Now the rest that I'm going to do is going to be based on these two truths, if you will. I to the third power can be written I squared times I. But we know that I squared equals negative one. 
So this will be negative one times I, which will be negative I. And I to the fourth power equals I squared times I squared, which is negative one times negative one, which is positive one. So the things you have to memorize here are I equals the square root of negative one, I squared equals negative one, I to the third equals negative i, and i to the fourth equals positive one. And also, i to the zero power equals one. Any number raised to a zero power is one, even in the complex number system. So actually, I guess you should memorize these five. It'll save you time if you go ahead and make a flashcard and memorize these. Now, why? Because of this. You're gonna be multiplying complex numbers. Um, three plus two I times five minus seven I. Okay, the three, the three will multiply the five and the three will multiply the negative seven I and the plus two I will multiply the five and the plus two I will multiply the negative seven I. So that what you get from this is 15 minus 21i plus 10i minus 14i squared. So that will be 15. This will be minus 11i minus 14 times negative one. So that will be 15 minus 11 I plus 14. So that will be 29 minus 11 I. What you get when you multiply these two complex numbers together is 29 minus 11i. Amazing, is it? Now also, sometimes you divide. 3 plus 2i divided by 5 minus 7i. And the same thing is true here as when you studied the radical functions. i is a square root. You can't have a root, a radical, in your denominator even when it's disguised as i. So what we have to do is multiply by one in the form of the conjugate of five minus seven I, which is five plus seven I over five plus seven I. Then you're going to have to multiply the tops together
Ah, ah, it's a plus. Okay, okay, let's do this. Three times five is 15. Three times positive seven I is 21 I. I should say three times plus seven I. Now plus two I times five is plus 10 I. And plus two I times plus seven I is plus 14 I squared over. Now these are conjugates. We have a shortcut for multiplying conjugates. No, 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 no. Five, five squared minus seven I squared. That's only because they're conjugates. Remember, you've got A minus B times A plus B. When you multiply conjugates like that, you'll get A squared minus B squared which is how we get that. But these guys up here, they're not conjugates, so we just have to flat out multiply them. This will give us, let's see, we'll have 15 plus 21 plus 10i, 21i plus 10i is 31i, 15 plus 31i, plus 14 times negative one over 25 minus 49 I squared. So that will be, let's pull it on over here so I don't run out of room. I hate it when I have to go over to another page. We will have 15 plus 31i minus 14 over 25 minus 14 times negative one. Well, 15 minus 14, those are both real numbers so I can combine them. 15 minus 14 is one plus 31i over 25 plus 14 and that'll be 1 plus 31i over 39. Barbara, I do have a question. I'm not done yet. Oh, my bad. But I'm almost done. You see, normally I would be done if I didn't have an I number there. But I do. So I've got to put the answer in A plus B I form, which is um, a, a complex form. So I'm going to have to write this as 1 over 39 plus 31 over 39i. And if I haven't made an arithmetic error along the way, this is the answer. Talk to me. <laughs> um, I was wondering why the negative 49 didn't go down where the negative 14 is. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think you wrote oh, negative, no. negative 49. 49, yes, and there I went. There I went. 
Okay, that's going to be plus 49. Maybe I should have stayed right underneath. Okay, now uh, five plus nine is 14, carry the one, that'll be 74. So, now that's the answer. Oh dear, all right, I should have waited. Complex numbers, this is week eight. Complex numbers. Wait, okay, why, now. why did we get the answer that we did? Like instead of leaving one plus 31 I over 74. That would be the easy way. Yes, it would. But because we're in the complex number system, numbers that are complex numbers have to be written in complex form. It's like so, if you go ahead. Sorry. So instead of um writing 31 I over 74, you leave the I on the outside? Yes, you do. Okay. Because here's your A number. That's the real number. And this is a real number, but it's the coefficient of an I number. This is A plus B I form. Good question. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Now you are very lucky that you can do actually do these on your calculator and I'm going to show you how. OK, the first thing we have to do is Turn on the calculator. And it's on, but I'll pretend I'm turning it on. Um, and then we are going to go to mode. Am I going to go to mode? <laughs> yes, that's what I do. I just click on mode right there. And I'm going to use my down arrow key to come down, 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 down to where real is blinking. Real is what's highlighted right now because we're in the real number system. We have to move to the complex number system. So with your right arrow key right here, you're going to move over to where the, the cursor, if you call it that, is blinking on top of A plus B I, and then you hit enter. Now, if you move your cursor up, you can see that A plus B I is highlighted. We're now, the calculator now, is in the complex number system. So, going to make it smaller and I'm going to say second quit and I am going to get ready to write some complex numbers and so this is what I want to do um, well let's just do three plus two I plus 5 minus 7i, 
we can add complex numbers. We can subtract complex numbers. We can multiply them. Let's multiply them and make sure that we get the same answer. I don't have to put that there. And then However, you do have to put the numerator and the denominator in parentheses. OK. So that's what we're going to do. I am going to add now 3 plus 2 and you're going to have to be looking on your own calculator. Um, take my word for it that above the decimal key right here is a little letter I. OK, so how I get that is I push the second button. And then the decimal button and that gives me an I. And then I close my parentheses. And then I hit a plus and then open the parentheses. Five minus seven and then second decimal key, decimal point. And close the parentheses. And then all I have to do is hit enter. And I find out that my answer is 8 minus 5i. And I, it's the same thing as if you did it by hand. 3 plus 5 is 8. 2i minus 7i is negative 5i. Now let's subtract. Parentheses. 3 plus two, second dot, minus parentheses, five minus seven, second dot. There you go, three minus five is negative two, 2i, now that negative negative will make it a plus. So 2i plus 7i are going to give us 9i, positive 9i plus 9i. Can't wait to multiply. It's the multiplication and the division that are noticeably easier. Twenty nine minus eleven I. Now, what did we get when we multiplied here? Twenty nine minus eleven I. Woo woo. All right, now there is usually an extra step involved in this. Three plus to I divided by five minus seven I. Enter. Oh, that's like the scariest thing you've ever seen. But if you can keep from totally panicking when you see it, all you have to do is take a deep breath and then push, push the math button and you're going to math frack that very ugly number. There it is. And that is the answer we came up with, with a little prodding. OK. 
Okay, so what you want to do, even if you don't want to do it, is practice a little bit. And then, unfortunately, to end all your joy, there is a part of the homework. Warning, you have taken no action. Yes, continue. There is a part of the homework that uh, uh, the calculator will not do for you, unfortunately. So we do have to talk about that, even though it's bad news. For instance, this. The square root of negative three. Now let's see what happens if I put it in the calculator. I actually don't know. The square root, square root, square root of negative three, the square root of negative three. Okay. Now that's a negative sign and not a not a minus sign. I'm going to hit enter. There you go. Look at that ugly beastie. And then you can try as you might to make it into a fraction, and it won't because the square root of three is an irrational number. This is from the square root of three. The I comes from the square root of the negative one. So you have actually got to do that by hand. That sounded kind of whiny, but it makes me feel a little whiny. And you can actually actually leave that answer the way it is, unless you're specifically asked to turn it into complex form, like it says there. Isn't that cute? I mean, really, isn't that cute? Yeah, it says you have to type it in complex form. Fine. Zero. Zero plus the square root of three. Come to the outside with the right arrow key on your keyboard and then hit I, which is supplied for you. Let's see. Yeah. Well, if they hadn't said put it in A plus B I form, you could just leave it like that. Square root of negative 75, we have to talk about these nasty things in your life. The calculator will definitely not do this for you. And there's, there's something more to this problem. We have to simplify the square root of 75. <clears throat> It's got the perfect square 25 as one of its factors. Now, the square root of negative one times the square root of 25 times the square root of three. This is the only one that will not break down. This is irrational. So we're going to have I times five times the square root of three. But as long as you're having to put this in A plus B I form, your answer is going to be zero plus five times the square root of three, and then safely outside the radical, I. So you still have to simplify radicals when um, 
when your radicand, the number under the radical, contains a perfect square in it. This is called simplifying. Remember that, simplifying. Nobody likes it, but you've got to do it. Now, what else? There's another kind of problem. If it's in here, there's subtracting and adding. Here, this problem. This problem, probably the calculator will not do for you. Let's see. Um, 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 second, second dot. That, that gives me an I and then carrot 15. What you've got is I raised to the 15th power. Will the calculator simplify that? Let me hit the right arrow key. Let's see. It does. OK, that'll work. But if the number there gets much larger, like I to the 63. It's doing it. Um, didn't used to. That's all I can say. Um, I'm really outstandingly, I may decide to buy this. Um, most of the calculators, the physical calculators, go crazy when they have to do this and it won't work. So what you'd have to do, let's make this the last thing we do today. You've got to do this by hand most of the time. Unless your calculator is really new. Let's try this. I to the 35th power. The trick to doing this is finding out how many fours go into 35, because I to the fourth, you remember, equals one. So I'm going to divide four into 35. And well, four times nine is 36, so I'll have to do four times eight, okay, eight. Four will go evenly eight times, and then there is a remainder. And the remainder is three. This is what that means. Four eight times, you're going to have I to the fourth times 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 i to the fourth, times i to the fourth. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are the eight i to the fourth. And then there's an i to the third. That's what the remainder is. So you're going to have one times 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 i to the third, which is negative i. Which means all those ones times negative i is just negative i. And that's how you simplify an i raised to a power. Now finally, I saw another problem back here which I miss this kind of problem on a test, so I'm very sensitive to it. When I was a student, I've never forgotten it. Okay, I'm gonna make one like it. Close that down. 
make this big. Beware of problems like I'm going to show you. Square root of negative four times the square root of negative um, um, six, uh, 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 25. Okay, well, this is the square root. You see what I did in the real number system, you can just do this. I mean, given that there is no such thing as the square root of negative four, they're both square roots. So using that rule, you can multiply these together get the square root of 100, which is 10. And that's precisely what I did on a test. And I was sure I was right. And I was wrong. Got the test back bleeding red. Let's do this the right way and then you are free to go. Negative four. Square root of negative 25. Do do this. The square root of negative one times four times the square root of negative one times 25. That will give you the square root of negative one times the square root of four times the square root of negative one times the square root of 25. This will be I times two times I times five. This will be I squared times 10, which is negative one times 10, which is negative 10. That's the right answer. Okay, you have now mastered the complex number system and we're never gonna go away. So um, if you changed your calculator to A plus BI, you can leave it there for the rest of the semester and for any higher level classes you go to. Okay. So you can tell all your friends, friends you went out of this world today to another dimension. And I will talk to you when? Tomorrow. When we will do more fun things. Actually, they are pretty exciting and I love them. Questions on any part of what we did? I think I do, Miss Barbara. It's only just finished. What now? I think I do. I, I have it on the last uh, problem that we just did. Oh, OK. So where it's I times five, we got I squared times 10. Uh, I, I thought I times five would give us negative five. Would that not be it? No, uh-uh. OK, can you no. explain why? Sure, because I times I is I squared and two times five is Oh, yay, OK. That yay! Makes sense. That makes so much sense. Because the square root of negative one isn't negative one, the square root of negative one is i. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up, Miss Barbara. Okay. Uh, do you still want to meet tomorrow or not? Tomorrow I am actually working. Oh, okay. next week. Oh, dang it. Next week we're on vacay, huh? We are, yeah, we are. but I can still meet. You okay with that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let email me, me the, email me what time would be good for you. Okay, sounds good, Miss Barbara. I'll see you next week then, okay? Okay, well, I'll bye bye. We're in class, but like next week for tutoring. That's right, everybody. Yes, spring, spring, fall break is Monday and Tuesday. So no classes, but I'm glad to meet with people anyway. Okay, see ya. Thank you for doing that, Miss Barbara. Have a great day. You too.